Okay, for my next project, uh, I'm going to build. This is all the material I need, except one more piece of this mahogany I'm going to use to make an inlay on the on the lid. This is going to be a pin box, a pin display box. Uh, someone asked me about making one, and I'm trying to make one. I've watched several videos. I'm trying to make one from a scroll saw point of view. Most people use a router or whatever to make the cradle for the pin to lay in. So I'm trying to make this scroll saw related, and I might make some of the others. I, I really like the way they look. They're kind of interesting little boxes. So anyway, what I've got here is some mahogany and maple. I've got another piece of mahogany here somewhere come off this end cut. It's over on my table saw. And I'm going to, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these two pieces and I'm going to cut an outline. Of, I've got this pen I'm using. It's a small pen. That's the reason it's, it's going to be thin wood. It's not a very big pen. Normally people make these for a pen like they turned. They're larger than this. But I don't have something like that. I'm going to use this. So it's custom made for this pen. And if you had a larger pen, you'd cut a different cradle here. So, now that's an old pen. I've owned that pen for over 40 years. It was, uh, I don't know if you can see that. It was from Halliburton Services Stimulation Operator Training Graduate, Training School Graduate. Uh, it was about 40 years ago. Uh, and stimulation is actually short for frack. I was a frack operator. So, but anyway, that's another story way back in the past. Uh, but I'm going to use that pen as, as the pattern for cutting this cradle. Cut that cradle and glue these together. And then I've got some uh, barrel hinges. I've got me some barrel hinges in. First time I've ever used those. I've been experimenting with them here to see how to mount them to make them work. Now this is not perfectly done and I don't really have it finished. I got it off just a little bit. You got to have precise drilling. But that's what I'm learning. I'm practicing with that, just some scrap wood. But I like the way they work. They'll stand up alone and you have to actually close it. It doesn't fall down. I'm going to have to probably relieve the back side of that a little bit to make it work without pulling that, trying to pull that barrel out of the hole. But uh, that's, a, that's a new thing for me. I'm going to learn how to use. So then on the lid, before I glue that on, I'm going to cut an inlay. I've been looking through all my patterns and all my books for something, and I wanted something long and thin and symmetrical. I'm going to use one of these. I'm thinking probably this, possibly this one. Uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use another piece of mahogany to lay in the top of that to match the center. And uh, what this is, is this, you're supposed to cut those and make snowflakes out of them. That's a Christmas decoration pattern. Anyway, that's my plan. And there's not, that's the only pattern I have. Uh, there's this I'm doing from the seat of my pants. I've already tried one that I had the dimensions off way too much for this pen, so I had to come back and rethink it. And I found a simpler way to do it. I tried to make it too difficult to do, so I'm looking for a simpler way, and this is what I'm coming up with. We're gonna see if this works. And first I'm gonna, I'm gonna stack these and get the outline of that pen on them and cut that outline out. Then I'm gonna let, put the inlay in the lid, and then I'm gonna cut everything to size, and I'll probably do that for a, a cut the, out, the outlines and all. I figure how long I want it to be and cut everything to size. Then, like I say, cut those holes and then lay the lid and then figure out where to uh, drill those holes so I get it correct. So let me do some uh, thinking here on the length. I'll do it a little shorter than something about like that, probably. And uh, I'll get everything cut to the same size and start cutting uh, the scroll saw work on it. All right, I've got all four of these pieces cut to about six and a quarter inches. I've centered that pin and drawn an outline on it. And I'm going to start with this and test and see if the pin fits okay, if I need to adjust it any. But I'm going to cut the minimum that I can right now. So I've got a number seven blade left over from the previous cut. It's going to be good enough to finish this. It's just mahogany. I'll cut this out, test the pin, and see what the next step is.
Okay, I've got me uh, pieces of the same material that I'm using for the inlay. Strap the end cuts off of that. <clears throat> I'm going to test the angles that I want to use. I'm going to start out with a 2 degree and then I'll test it with a 3 degree to see what I'm going to use. So the pin, pin cut out worked just fine. I'm going to have to do some sanding on it and kind of smooth it out. I want to round the edges on it, but I didn't have to adjust that any. It's, it's working okay. So let me do a little test on this and I'll see what angle I want to use to cut the uh, inlay for the lid and then I'll get that lined up to cut. Okay, I cut the number two. Um, I won't pull it off and look at it till I get three. I'm going to try to cut the three now, three degree. Now, I'm using a number two blade. So uh, I want to remove, remove as little material as possible. So now I'm going to do the same thing, make that circle in the same direction with a, uh, at, a number, at a three degree angle. Well, on a two degree, it sinks below the surface a little bit. That's the mahogany right there. And at three degree, it sticks up that much more. I think I'm going to try it at two and a half. Uh, I could make this work. There'd be a lot of sanding to get it down. That one, same thing. I don't really want to sand the top down that much. So I'm going to try it at two and a half. And I'll do one more test here. And I think two and a half will probably be okay. I don't mind it being a little bit proud. And I can sand it down smooth. Plus I can leave this piece in the bottom to sand that from the bottom and still have it filled. You won't be able to see all of it, but you possibly can see some of it through the cradle for the uh, pins. So let me do this again with two and a half to, to see how that works, but I think that's probably where I'm going to be. After a fourth cut, I've, I've gone to uh, two and a quarter. Two and a half still was sticking up a little higher than I liked, but that's just barely uh, anything sticking up, and I think that's going to work perfect, especially perfectly when I sand it. That Right there, that's uh, this one was two and a half, it's still stuck up a little further than I like. This one is two and a quarter, and I think that's going to work just fine. So, I'm going to leave the table set where it is. I'm going to set up my piece to cut that outline in my uh, in my lid, what's going to be the top of the box. Okay, I'm all set up. I've left the table the same, got the same blade, same kind of material. I'm just going to do the outline of this. I've got it pretty well centered. I drew some lines and tried to get it as close to uh, symmetrical as I could. So let me go with this and see how this turns out. I, if, I don't, if I mess this up, I may ruin the whole project, but we'll find out here in just a few minutes. Okay, so that's working rule so far. I put the that piece of uh, maple back in there. It stuck out, so I used a, a, a spoke shave, and I cut it down, and then I sanded it. And now that's the, this part will glue to that. So now I'm going to glue this piece in. And it's going to stand proud a little bit, which is fine. I need to sand this anyway. And I'll sand that down and get a finish on it. So that, that's my next job, my next step. I'm going to glue that in.
Okay, I got the two halves of it made, and I've, I've worked on getting them to match up, get them to spit together with no seam showing, you no know, cracks showing in the middle. I had to square it up on all sides. It was got this little homemade tri square, and it was it was off a little bit. Uh, it's not perfect now, but it's uh, much better. So the critical next step, and I'm, I'm debating on whether to put a finish on it before I drill the uh, uh, the holes for the uh, barrel uh, pinches, because that's going to be critical. they got to be lined up perfectly, and I'm not going to be able to put a finish on it, because uh, you get the finish off on those hinges. Uh, that's kind of what I'm concerned about. Now I'm also going around these corners and, and ease all the corners, round it off and make it a little more, and there's the top of it, make it a little more uh, comfortable to the hand. So I think I'll do that next. I may just clamp them together and work the corners down and together and uh, then get these, uh, uh, at least the top, the lid, smooth it off a little bit. Uh, make it a little more comfortable to the hand, and then I'm gonna have to uh, I'm gonna build me a little jig of some kind so I make sure I drill both both pieces the same to get those barrel hinges in because uh, that's you know I've been practicing with those and playing with those they're not super difficult to put in but you got to make sure you get them accurate so I'm gonna do some sanding on this and get these corners rounded off and all that and then I'll I'll practice a little bit more with those barrel hinges to make sure I get them right and and like I say I may put a finish at least on the inside I'll finish I'll spray the inside of it before I drill the holes and then when I get everything together I'll finish the outside okay I got uh, a bit of finish on the inside I like the way that's looking of course uh, Mahogany always looks nice when it's finished. Now, I've made this little jig. And the idea is you put it in there and you drill the holes and you match it up on the other one and drill the holes. I've been practicing with this with some scrap. You can still mess up. So I have to be very careful. If I've already checked it, I mean, I can see those marks on the, on the camera, but I've got a couple of marks there, a couple of marks there, and I make sure they lined up and that gives me an indication of how I'm going to put it in the jig. I make sure that those marks go into my drill holes. I've got the drill bit marked for the depth. And I've, I've taken a little bit off this back corner right here. Because it, it would just barely, on all my practice pieces, it would just barely scrape each other there. And, and if you drill it just a little bit off, it'll be enough it'll pull the barrel out of the hole. Now, they do have little screws to come with those screw down beside them. Uh, I haven't had any luck with those. Now this is mahogany. It might work in this mahogany. I'll test it before I put one in, but uh, they're so tiny and the little little slots on the top of them aren't that strong. It's hard to put them in hardwood. Uh, some of those barrel hinges have two screws. Some of them have a screw that's mounted here in the side. The larger ones like you use on a cabinet door they have a larger screw right here that you screw after you put it in and it splits the bottom out to wedge it in and then it has a place on the other side to put the other screw in. Now I've got screws and you see a little slot right there and a little bevel. I got one on each side and on both sides of the barrel hinge. I got some tiny little screws in there that they intend for you to screw that in. I don't think I'm going to use them. I've had trouble like I say, they're so so small, and if the wood's hard at all, I've had trouble getting them in. I've stripped a couple of those little screws. So I may put a drop of super glue on them. You have to be very careful you don't get anything in the mechanism. But uh, they're so tight, I don't have to worry about them being pulled out. They're so tight, uh, in some of the test pieces, I've had to actually take it to the scroll saw and cut it to get them out. So uh, I may not do anything but just wedge them in. And get them at the right depth. So let me go over to the uh, drill press and make sure I get these lined up properly and see if I can get them drilled and get this, the hinges installed and then I'll put a, finish it off with a finish on the outside. 
Okay, I was successful in mounting the lid. I had to be real careful. You just have to make sure you put them in the jig the proper way. Hinges work great. I had to take the chisel and cut, smooth that off a little bit more in the back to get it to open up to that much. And the hinges are solid. They'll probably get looser as you use it. And uh, my original intent was to put some magnets out here or a magnet and a piece of metal. But right now I'm going to leave it like that. Uh, it, it, they hold pretty tight. Wherever you put them, they hold. It won't fall open if you turn it upside down. Uh, so what, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to do some more finish sanding. I smoothed these corners off. I didn't really round it over. I just took the edge off of it, make it uh, soft to the hand. Do some more finish sanding, and then I'm going to uh, put me a, a finish on it. Kind of bring that, uh, make, it'll make that the, uh, mahogany show up a little better and make it look, I think, look pretty nice. Maple and mahogany has a good contrast, and you can get kind of a depth of look in the ma mahogany. So let me do a little more sanding. I've got a few places there I say I need to get a little smoother. And uh, put a finish on it, and we'll see how it looks. Well, there it is. I got a bit of finish on it. That's my first attempt at a swivel top uh, pin box. And it, like I say, I've, I've watched a lot of videos on making these. Most people um, use a router to make these pieces. They may have separate end pieces on them, just router the bottom and sometimes the top to make a cradle, and then put separate end pieces on it. And uh, those make pretty nice ones, depending on the kind of wood you use, but uh, I'm focusing this channel on scroll saw, so I wanted to make it with a scroll saw. Of course, I use a table saw to cut the material, break down material and what have you, and get things straight and true. Uh, and a lot of sanding and chisels and a few things, planes. Um, not a lot of that, but you have to use a little bit of it to finish some projects. So yeah, this is my first attempt. I'm not super happy with it. I'm not, not totally in love with it, but I think it works. It, it succeeded in what I wanted to do. Now I'm going, probably going to do it again. I'm going to think about some other ways of doing this. And uh, of course, then I had to learn at the same time how to use those barrel hinges, which is a, <coughs> its own procedures there to make sure you get everything right. I think I succeeded in that part. It works like it's supposed to. It keeps it together and everything lined up when I put them together. So uh, I got another one I'm going to try. Maybe my next video. Uh, there's a YouTuber named Izzy Swan. Some of you may have seen him. He made one with a bandsaw and he has this pattern. This is a flip top. Pin rests in this cradle right here and you flip this Pull this down and it flips up and displays. Uh, he did a band, used a bandsaw. I thought if he used a bandsaw, I believe I can do that with a scroll saw. I'm gonna go back and review the video a few times and make sure I know what I'm doing. I'm gonna try to recreate his. Uh, it's a very nice little uh, little thing. He, I think he probably designed that. I bought that pattern off his website. It was three ninety five or something like that. But I wanted to try it because uh, I like that that concept. Uh, but I think I can do that with a scroll saw. Now you have side pieces on that. Uh, that's kind of the centerpiece that works, and you have to have a, a sides on it. So that's probably going to be my next video. But this is this is the one I'll be putting up next. Now I made that specifically to fit that pin. If you had a different pin, you could cut those pieces, inner pieces, to uh, to fit the pin that you have. And wouldn't have to use the barrel hinges. You use any kind of a hinge. A little piano hinge or little small hinges would work for that. And maybe a clasp. Now I thought about uh, these hinges are, are working fine as they are, but I could still go back if I needed to and put a magnet. I'd like to use them. If it, that was my first intent, but I want to see how well the hinges worked uh, without any help. And so far it's okay, but that could be done if I wanted to. Uh, put a magnet on one and a nail head or something there, or two magnets to hold it together. But it stays together by itself. It won't fall open if you turn it over. So I'm going to use it as is for now. Of course, this is uh, just a display type of thing, basically. So I hope you like that. And that was my first attempt. 
Um, they're not totally unhappy with it, but I'm not crazy about it either. But it works. So if you like it, hit the like button. You know, hit the subscribe button. If you're not subscribed, you never know what I'm going to try next. I love to expand my horizons. So thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.